Welcome to Radically Distinct Radio with Jen Morgan. Radically Distinct Radio bridges the worlds of brand marketing and professional development to help you take control of your future and build your brand to accomplish your goals. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself to launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Radically Distinct Radio provides insights for how to show up in the world as your most powerful brand. As a brand strategist, advertising producer, and business coach, Jen Morgan has 15 years experience helping individuals, teams, and companies create stories that inspire action. Her RAD method empowers people to be radically distinct by giving them a framework for perceiving their brand and expressing their value that sets them in the class of their own. Now, she brings the RAD method to the airwaves to help you maximize your brand power to produce results. Here's your host, Jen Morgan. Wow, actually, this is Pat, because Pat and Jen get to do a show together. (laughs) Uh, Jen's joining me here today. We're taking on what I love to talk about, not too often these days, but used to love it, uh, perception. But what is perception? Most importantly, what is radically distinct perception? You know, Jen, this is kind of interesting, right? Because here you are, Radically Distinct Radio. You know, here you've created the RAD method, as well as, you know, being someone that is out in the world day to day to day to day to day, talking to people, making things happen, and really pushing people to the end, you know, the boundary. So perception ended up in the RAD method. So give us a sneak peek about what we just talked about in the previous shows and how perception fits in. Okay, so the RAD method is a brand development strategy for maximizing your power to produce results. And last last month in September, we talked about passion. Passion is that emotional energy that you can put into what you do. When you've got a lot of passion, when you're able to bring all of yourself to what you do, it creates a sense of ease, a sense of enthusiasm that makes even difficult tasks much easier for you to do. And without it, it's like you're running on an empty tank of gas. Everything becomes very challenging. It's hard to make decisions. You're really just not sure what you want. And this month, today, we're going to talk about perception. And perception is really how you think about what you do that affects how you show up in the world and the results that you produce. And, you know, I think it's really interesting. Dr. Pat has a degree in psychology. And so I, I'm curious, Dr. Pat, how do psychologists think about perception? Yeah, actually, in the world of psychology, I will tell you that perception has been the stepchild in, in, in a lot of ways in the psychological world. Because when people think about perception and you think about psychology, you know, folks want to talk about behavior. They want to talk about modifying behavior. But but here's where perception has really taken front stage now. Uh, we don't call it perception much anymore. We add this fancy cognitive thinking mind thing. As a matter of fact, you know, the whole world of thought right now and mindfulness is built upon. It's a multi-billion dollar world, by the way. So who knew perception would turn into mindfulness, would turn into thinking, would turn into positive living, would turn into vision boards, right? Mm -hmm. And be the gateway for people to uh, live an amazing life. Because without it, we're left to definition. So perception gives us the ability to flip on a dime of what we see or believe on a dime. If I say red in, in, in the color red, or if I put up a website and it's all red, as a matter of fact, I was just talking about this the other day, and my friend puts up a website, she says, it's got to be black. I want everything to be black. And we're looking at it and we're saying, oh my gosh, that black thing does not match what the name of your book is. All of us have a perception of that. And so you go down this pathway, perception is the number one uh, cause of conflict. As a matter of fact, it's like, we I can go on. I don't even want to go on. But what I want to say about it is it's kind of defined simply. It's one of the simplest definitions in psychology and one of the most complicated to measure. It's the way you think about or understand someone or something. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
That's the definition. Now, it would be really fun if that simplicity of that uh, of perception was actually what it is. But it's a mental image. And Jen, your mental image of one thing may be a great, uh, okay, real life example, Pittsburgh Steelers uniforms. I went out of my mind last week. I grew up on the East Coast. Pittsburgh was in my wheelhouse of sports, right? Mm -hmm. Benny's probably laughing. I can't believe they're wearing tiger stripe uniforms. What is that? This is the steel city. So there we go. That's my perception. <laughs> Probably nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like the definition that perception is personal understanding um, mm -hmm. or the reality that a person lives in. And obviously, just like, you know, you we all live in different realities in that way from a perspective of perception. And I'm not a psychologist, but I... I, I think one of my talents in life is to make very complicated ideas simple to understand. So when I'm talking about radically distinct perception, I'm helping people understand who they are in relation to their goals so that they can have a mental image that they can win. And I think that that's very challenging for people because we humans make decisions emotionally and then we rationalize those decisions with our minds. We like to think that we make decisions logically, but... <laughs> It's just not how it right. works. You know, we feel, we sense the world. We're, we're sentient creatures that experience the world through our senses. And then what we have to do is interpret that information and then organize it. And all of the interpretations that we come up with are based on our own experiences. And, mm -hmm. you know, Pat, your life and your experience and your studies are much different than mine. And so, therefore, the perception that I have of even the word perception would be significantly different than yours. Absolutely. And not to mention, it's our history, too, and the accumulation of experiences in life that melt in and shape, you know, what those mental images are. I mean, I give you a real simple example. I, I grew up with uh, Terry Bradshaw, Pittsburgh Steelers, black uniforms, gold, you know, out there on the football field. To see them in this striped uniform last week, I was shocked. I actually couldn't watch the game. And I thought to myself, Pat, you got to watch the game. Get over it. What, because but you it, felt like it didn't represent your team? Is that the deal? Well, that's what it is. When, <laughs> okay. you're, when your history is Pittsburgh Steelers, right? It would, be, it would be like, you know, the Yankees go into a red uniform. But that's just a simple example. Do you know we go through this? And you're the branding expert. Right. You get what happens if you decide to change the shape of the Coca-Cola bottle, well, right? right? Mm -hmm. But we do. And, and I think you and I are simplifying this in a way where millions of dollars, the work that you do to help people discover this isn't a 20-minute session, right? Mm -hmm. Because we bring all of this with us, don't we? Right. All yeah. of it. True. All of it. True. True. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, you bring up the idea of advertising. And uh, yeah. one of the things that I think is really important for, for you at home to to think about when we're talking about this concept of perception, you know, my goal is to figure out how can you sitting at home think about how do you think and feel and believe about yourself? And how is that either holding you back to get what you want out of life? Or how is that empowering you to get what you want out of life? Right. And so today, when we're talking about this concept, I want you to really think about how do you think about yourself and your ability to achieve what you're trying to do? Um, and really understand what we're talking about here is Dr. Pat is saying she's watching this game and she emotionally decided she was not on board for those tiger stripes. And then she's <laughs> rationalizing all of the reasons why based on her past, based on these memories and these thoughts that she has. That's exactly what you're doing. All of a sudden you want to launch a new business. You want a new job. And what you're going to do is you're going to emotionally feel a certain way about that. And then however you feel like, oh, my God, that's scary. I can't do that. And then your mind is going to get on board and tell you exactly why. So I want you to really think about this idea of humans make decisions emotionally and rationalize with their minds, because that's really the basic premise of advertising and politics. You know, advertising, what they do is they try to connect with you emotionally. They want to get your heart. And then what they're going to do is give you some words that make you all of a sudden feel like you want to buy something that you didn't even think that you wanted to buy. And in politics, we're going to try to capture this feeling that you have, your disconnect, your discontent with the world around you, you know, your anger towards how much you have to pay taxes, your anger towards whatever those things are. They grab that from you, that emotional aspect of you, and then 
try to use their words and their logic to get you to vote either for or or either for or against your own best interests. And so humans have like a natural, we humans, meaning us people, have a natural distaste for this concept that we're talking about right now because it's been used against us so much throughout our history. But you can actually have control here. And the thing that you can have control over is you can't control how other people perceive you. You can't control how what other people think about you, how they feel about you, what they believe about you. But you can control how you show up in the world. And okay, do you want to hear shocking news? Benny, you're going to die when you hear this. Do you want to hear some shocking news? Because this, this got interesting to me. Okay, so maybe we'll, you can talk about this when we come back from break. This got so interesting to me. I thought, you know, let me find out what their thinking is about this. I did. I said that. You know, I put my judgment aside and I said, let me, let me, let me, let me think about, let, let me find out what was the thinking about this. Did you know? Was it some, some initiative that's happened? What was? It? Okay. So what I find out, it's the NFL and Nike partnering together. They're called Color Rush uniforms. That was number one. Number two, I find out that uh, these uniforms may be on every team, every team. And then I find out I live in Seattle, Seattle Seahawks. Their color generally is a bluish, bluish green silver. And I look at the color that they're getting ready to put on the Seattle Seahawks. It's like a Kelly green. So here I am saying, Okay, I went out in the world. I'm trying to understand this. I think this. And so my question for you when we come back, how do we move forward in creating the exact perception we want to create so that we can achieve our goals? Jen Morgan in the house. Lots to talk about. Now, I know all you're going to Google this now, right? Benny's probably Googling it right now. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Have you ever wanted to learn about the colors of your chakras? Well, now's your chance. Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, is hosting an event Friday, November 4th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in Mount Vernon. Every person will get a reading on the most prominent color in their aura. Join Lynn Brown November 4th at the Riverwalk Studio in Mount Vernon. To register for this event, call 360-588-4713. That's 360-588-4713. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, a.m. 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. Beyond being this amazing neurologist, inventor, author, Dr. Dan Cohen has been called to look at technology and look at personal and spiritual development and merge these together. This technology uses the healing and psycho-spiritual effects of synchronized sounds, vibrations, electromagnetic fields, and how that interacts with us in our nervous system in what we're calling the Soltech chair. The Soltech Lounge induces profound levels of relaxation that transition over time into deep meditative states. The synchronized sound, vibration, and magnetic field induce these states. The subject doesn't have to work at it. To learn more, go to soltechwellbeing.com. That's S O L T E C Wellbeing. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Song of the Heart, 
Walking the Path of Light from author and healer Francine Vale is available now. Through Francine's life story, we learn how imperative it is to love one another. Once this simple truth is learned, peace on earth will prevail. Song of the Heart is a life lived and a story told for this purpose. To learn more about Francine and her amazing gifts, or to order your copy of the book today, visit angelsandlightbeings.com. Jen Morgan's here. We're talking about, you know, this is really kind of fun for those of you out there. You know, Radically Distinct Radio, the RAD Methods, this is something that she created. And, you know, part of this is what Jen does to help others, others come forward, achieve their goals, and do it in a way that they want to get it done. You know, it doesn't mean, right, Jen, that, you know, we're not capable of getting things done. But perception is part of the RAD method. And, you know, now we're talking about perception is reality. But this is something you have to really cover exhaustively when you when you work with people. Who are some of the people that, you know, in in our culture that we point to to say, oh, OK, I get that. Well, I think Marilyn Monroe is a really good example for uh, for perception and specifically because Marilyn Monroe was one of the most marketable actresses of her time. And by the writers and the directors who are contemporaries really consider her to be the character she created for herself to be as brilliant as Charlie Chaplin's Tramp. And yet the public perception of her, meaning what everybody else thinks about her, we, didn't, we don't think about her in that way. We think about her as a dumb blonde and in a kind of a she's sexy and we, we like to look at her. Maybe we want to be her or we want to marry her, you know, one of those two things. But in general, we don't respect her intellect. But her she actually was quite brilliant in the look that she designed um, intentionally from, from the color of her hair to the, her, the way she did her makeup to the way she spoke, the tone of her voice, the way she walked with her body. All of that was a very intentional thing in order to create an alluring, um, to, to draw an audience. And she was fantastic at it so good that she was at the top of her field and yet this perception in the public com- kept coming back to haunt her because it affected her confidence in a deeply deep deep level no matter what she did she was never really seen for being a brilliant actress and and businesswoman she was seen for being quite honestly stupid mm. That was her personal brand, right? I mean, let's talk about personal brands. Do we all have to be Marilyn Monroe to have one? No. And in fact, you know, anybody, everybody has a personal understanding of themselves in the world. And that means everybody has a personal brand. You might not think about it like it's a personal brand, but it is, you know, there's a lot of ways in which you're thinking about and or considering your personal brand. For example, if you're interviewing for a new job, you would be thinking, you know, uh, you know, what am I going to say in this interview? How am I going to dress? All of those questions. But also, you know, I would ask you as your brand strategist, is that the right job for you? Are you are you like really like thinking high enough in terms of the value that you can provide? Do you know the value that you can provide to an organization? All of those are brand awareness. You know, like, how do I think about my brand? Online dating, well, the words that you put in your summary and the pictures you post are they an accurate representation of who you are or do you end up showing up at the date and you and or the person that you've attracted is disappointed? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, and the work environment, are you respected by people? Do they come to you and seek out your advice for your area of expertise or you're constantly in conflict with people around you because you feel like you have to prove that you have some sort of a value? That's also a brand awareness problem. Uh, client attraction, are you attracting people who can pay pay you what you're worth or want what you're selling or are you attracting people who really not really caring that much they just kind of want to talk to you or not that's a that's an awareness of the value that you bring to the table and how do you represent yourself in the world is it in alignment with the type of people that you want to attract when you're trying to launch a new business when you're thinking about how you're going to go about getting that out into the world and you're like looking at the goals in front of you this plan that you laid out are you paralyzed with fear because you aren't sure how to relate to that, how you're, you specifically are going to be able to launch that business or that new career direction for yourself. Or if you're leading a company, are you somebody that people want to get behind? 
or are they just basically there punching in a time clock? You know, all of those are brand challenges and brand questions that all stem from the perception you have of yourself or the perception that other people have of you. Yeah. I mean, you get to see so much of people. You know, you get to see where they are today and where they're going, right? Um, and this is a part that people don't get to see of themselves, right? Yeah, I, I think it's really hard to see yourself for a lot of reasons. One, you know, we're trained, culturally speaking, to sit down, get in line, do what we're told, mm -hmm. buy what we sell you, raise your hand when you want to talk. We're not told, to, we're not taught to stand up and speak out and be unique. I mean, it makes sense from a business perspective, but from an individual perspective, we all deeply want to belong to something and we want to feel like we fit in. And yet that goes completely against our best interest when it comes to, you know, moving to the forefront of your industry, getting a new product out there. Like you've got to be willing to stand out and, and speak up and, and be different. It's hard. Mm. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some examples if we could, because if you're sitting out there, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, why do I need a personal brand? You know, what is it that I'm going to need this for? And I'll tell you, the day and age we're living in right now, this digital age we're living in right now, um, it is so uh, it, it, obvious to a lot of people why what we're talking about here today, perception especially, is so important. You know, one missed tweet, one missed Facebook post, one missed thing, typos in LinkedIn, all of that has an effect. Tell us about some examples. What are some examples? Well, you know, I don't know if you remember when the Tylenol crisis happened. I think it was mm. in the 80s. Was that in the 80s? Was that in the 90s? Uh, but I remember like, like it was yesterday because I was scary. Yeah. So when the what, what happened, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I think it was in the 80s, but I'm not remembering the actual date is that there was some person went and contaminated some Tylenol bottles with arsenic or some sort of poison that basically killed seven people. Seven people died. And Tylenol basically has this product on their hand that's killing people. And it doesn't matter. You know, they did a lot of research, and they eventually found out it didn't have anything to do with the factories that the Tylenol came from. So it wasn't really Tylenol's fault. Some person had literally gone around to different stores and and, and, and gotten into these bottles maybe they bought them and then returned them it, it you know there's 1982 by the way 1982 thanks 1982. Benny. 1982. there Thank was about you. seven deaths reported seven deaths yep. yeah so yep. i was about two <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah so this happened and people you know they're the children people are dying a couple people from the same bottle and tylenol it's not tylenol's fault right so now all of a sudden tylenol has this faulty product that kills people that's the perception that's the reality even though tylenol did not you know, Tylenol or Johnson & Johnson, really, it wasn't their fault. So what ended up happening was that the CEO at the time, you know, he's now a historically uh, famous CEO. He, he had to get everybody on board to recall all Tylenol on all shelves. It cost $100 million to do this. And in order to do that, there was a couple things that had to happen. One, he had to know that was the right thing to do because he was the leader, right? So what made him believe that that was the right thing to do? Well, if you look into his story, you'll find out that trust is a very important part of him believing that's what makes a good CEO and makes a good business person, that all business relationships are built on trust. And so here's a person who's in this position in this major crisis, and he says, you know what? No, our customers need to trust us. This is what we need to do. How am I going to sell this to a board of directors to get them to spend $100 million to, bring, to take back off the shelf all these products? And it's really clearly not our fault. So he went to the company, Johnson & Johnson's Credo. And in the Credo, it basically, Credo is another word for manifesto. Uh, it basically says that our responsibility is first to our customers, then to our employees, then to our shareholders, or something of those. So he used that Credo, that, that what the brand stands for, in order to sell to the shareholders the right thing to do. And then what they did is they recalled, cost $100 million, and then created these safety-proof um, these safety proof uh, bottles. And right. Johnson and Johnson's like literally before that whole thing happened, I think I read they had 35 percent share of a huge market. Thirty five percent is a big deal. And then they had four percent. Right. Right. And so right. now, you know, they can't they totally came back. They bounced back from it. So, you know, a lot of times people were, were thinking we're so afraid to make a mistake. Honestly, quite, you know, go ahead, make a mistake, get something out there. But then 
how you show up and respond. How do you fix the mistakes that you make? You know, that's just as important. And how do you know what decisions to make in order to fix those mistakes? That comes down to your personal brand, your ability to know who you are and what the right thing to do is so that you create the perception that you want about yourself as a CEO, about yourself as a company. Yeah. And, you know, this is really something that you do uh, in working with people to help them make this decision. You see, sometimes we think we don't have any choice about who we are in the world or how we can show up. We don't. We think that, okay, I'm going to kind of follow the herd. I'm going to go along this path. But the world has really changed. I mean, everything from uh, who you are in your personal life, but how about who you are on the job? I mean, how does this, how does having a personal brand, you know, affect people that are job hunting or uh, date hunting? Well, so I, I actually had a client who she was a business for herself as a she was an entrepreneur. She had an event planning company, and she wanted to get a corporate job for a bunch of reasons. One, she didn't feel like she was financially making the amount of money she wanted to to contribute to the household expenditures. And she also was starting to get to this point where she wanted to have children and she felt like she wanted some sort of more security than what she felt the entrepreneurial life was going to afford for her. But she, the job that she thought she was well suited for, which was project manager, she didn't have any of the schooling and or credentials. However, she was an event planner and she knew she could do the job when she looked at what the things that were required. And she didn't have maybe the time to mm -hmm. take all of these things before she started to go and try and get that job. So we basically I took it. I took her on just like, OK, so let's write a sales letter to these people who are going to hire you. You know, your resume is a sales letter and your 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 cover letter is the is the hook page. And then the details are in your resume. So what we did was we took a look at her skill set as a, an event producer. And then we translated that into language that made sense for the job that she was trying to get, which is project manager. And See, the difference between so when we're writing our own resume, for example, we tend like, OK, well, I got good communication skills. I'm a good <laughs> leader. We use these generic terms that anybody could be. And sure, of course, you fit that. So how are you going to stand out? Well, how you're going to stand out is by getting very specific about how the fact that as an entrepreneur, you understand how to start a project from beginning to end, how to deliver on that project in a way that meets the expectations that you set. How, what does it mean to actually produce a project? And what does it mean to be able to like have the hard conversations up front so that you get people into a, a decision-making uh, position right from the beginning? So her ability to step into that role, all of a sudden she wasn't somebody who didn't have the credentials. All of a sudden she was a catch. And so she, she immediately got hired by Amazon, and then I think she moved to Microsoft, and where she eventually found her home. And But see, what, she, but what we have a tendency to do is say, you know, I don't have the credentials. Maybe I should look for a lower, like, you know, maybe I could be a court project coordinator or maybe I could be an administrative assistant and eventually work myself up. Well, if you have the skill set and you have the perception that you can do the job, then you most likely can do the job. <laughs> so let's just figure out how to talk about it. And your personal brand part is the part that becomes – how how do, how do you communicate that to the to the outside world? How do you show up in the world? Well, you got to have the right words. You have to dress the part. You also have to be able to have a conversation with another person that helps them understand that you know what you're talking about. It's not just some shtick that you put together. It's actually yeah. like you're you're actually understanding yourself and you're thinking about yourself in relationship to that job. Oh, I love this. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about radically distinct perception. But, you know, what is it exactly that Jen does? Does She took you through a little bit high level, but how does she go through this? How does she look at helping us understand the world we live in as we see it and the world we live in as others see it? Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. Would you like to experience life-transforming adventures in personal expansion and world service? If you do, tune in to learn about magical innate abilities that you can develop and use to make your dreams come true. Joy Elaine is author of The Joy Chronicles, and she's inviting you and millions of others to join her in working with galactic masters, angels, and the Ashtar Command as they assist humanity and planet Earth to achieve their ultimate destination of ascension. For more information about this upcoming event and broadcast, visit joyelaine.com. That's joy, E-L-A-I-N-E, dot com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine. Have you ever said to yourself, what is this mess I'm in? Believe it or not, part of us wants it. We have asked for deeper work, to understand love, to step into our power, to choose differently. Then when we start engineering the circumstances, we want to control how it unfolds. Let's be honest. It's like asking the universe to help you create something then saying, well, not like that. I want you to do it this way. If you are ready to shift into your best life, visit lesliefontaine.com and let's talk about unfolding all that you want to be, do, and have. You'll find sessions, classes, and audio products to help remove the blocks and move you into your potential. And listen to my show, Sheer Alchemy, on Transformation Talk Radio, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Jen Morgan's here. And, you know, you're listening to Radically Distinct Radio. Um, Jen, before we kind of jump in, I know you're going to really walk us through the process of what you do. How can people find out more about you? Let us know as well as how they can find out uh, more about the radio show, working with you, all of the above. Well, you can learn more about me and the radio show at jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two N's, morgan.com. There's a tab right at the top for radio. And, you know, we're on SoundCloud now, Google Play, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. So any of those, if you have a little app on your phone, you can find us on there and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Good. People hear this from time to time, even when we were talking about Marilyn Monroe, right? She had a process. You know, we don't really think about, oh, well, how did she become Marilyn Monroe? No, she had a process. And all of the other uh, actresses that followed, you know, thereafter, 
they had to have a process. They had to be somewhat different. They couldn't all be like her. And I know that you have a process that you take people through so that people can find their unique brand. Tell us what that is. Yes. So as you're listening to me do this, I want you to really think about some goal that you have in mind and how you can use what I'm saying right here to walk yourself through this idea of thinking through and or relating to the goal that you have. How do you get stuck in any of these areas? Because it's really helpful just to have the right questions in front of you because a lot of times we don't. So as I'm going through this, I'm going to talk to you about my process, how I take people through it. Really think about yourself. Uh, The first step is that if you want to show up in the world to be radically distinct, you need to have a radically distinct perception of who you are. So that's why we're talking about perception today. And in order to get that perception, I do an assessment to figure out who, who are you and what are you trying to do and what are your gaps in terms of your ability to actualize your goals. Because that's the foundation of a, an effective strategy. You know, you, you want to have the ability to understand what the person's already got a handle on and use that to your advantage as a strategist. And then you want to find out where the holes are and figure out if those holes need to be filled, <laughs> like with another person or, or, or some skills, or if you can kind of work around them until the person can kind of, you know, build that skill set up. And you want to also have this element of surprise, which is going to come from how you put those things together. So the first step is to really figure out who you are, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to do and what your skill gaps are. And then the second part is to profile your brand. What's your vision? What's the creative concept for your own identity that you can help guide your decisions creatively, aesthetically, um, also from a business perspective? What is it that you want people to think about you? It might not be like, for example, Marilyn Monroe. She didn't walk around saying, I want you to think that I'm alluring. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she right, she, she right. had this like the sensual idea of herself that I'm pretty sure she actually had, probably had a creative concept for. And then that creative concept is how she made decisions for it. That's an internal understanding of who you're trying, how you're trying to position yourself. But then you also need a positioning from an external perspective. How is the world going to categorize you? And, you know, the more creative you are, the less you will like this whole idea. But you really do want to make it easier for people to create a context around you. And then you need an elevator pitch. So that's all your profile. And another way to look at your brand profile is to think about your brand. It's, it's your brand story. It's the story you tell yourself that gets you to take action. And it's the story that you tell other people that inspires them to want to you know, be a part of what you're doing, whether it's to date you or it's to you know, become your customer, whatever that piece is. That's your brand profile. And that needs to be organized. Like You need to know the difference between your vision and your elevator pitch. Those are not the same things. Your vision is something that you can do. You can literally show up in a room. Like I can show up on this radio and I can live my vision. You know, my vision is to raise the bar. It does not matter what room you put me in. I can't help but live that vision. And if that's not happening, if everybody's playing a little small game, I get really antsy and I eventually walk out, which can be considered to be quite rude. But at the end of the day, people who see that within me, they love having me in their classes. They love having me be the, you know, their coach or their consultant because I hold them to a standard. Uh, okay, so that's the, your brand profile. So it's your assessment, mm-hmm. then your profile. And the third thing is you need a plan for how to express your brand effectively as you pursue your goals. Now, this is where I think people mess up a lot. We Mm -hmm. have fears and concerns. Everybody does, especially if you've never done it before or you've never put this, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Everybody has fears and concerns, and we have a tendency to want to ignore them. Ignore them, ignore them. And what that makes you do is procrastinate. (laughs) So... (laughs) What I do, yeah, is, I know that one. <laughs> yeah, and so what I want you to, what I want to do is, I'm working with you on your plan, is to get those out of you. You figure out what are you afraid of, what are your concerns, because within that information is a bunch of stuff. One, it's insights, insights that I can use. That if I don't know as your strategist, and I'm just sending you into the wrong direction, you know, there's insight in that in that information, and then there's a bunch of outdated ideas about who you used to be, you know, ten years ago, and that has to be updated. So you know, within that information, within your planning process, you should be uncovering thoughts and concerns and fears and then using those to shape your path. And the other thing that you need for a, an effective plan is metrics for tracking your progress for a lot of reasons. You know, as a consultant or a coach, I, you know, I want metrics because I want to be able to demonstrate that you're getting somewhere. But from an, a, an actual, being able to actualize your own goals, 
You want metrics so that you can see progress, so that you can see yourself getting to a new place, so that you have more energy and enthusiasm. It sort of reinvigorates you when you see that you get somewhere. People oftentimes don't like to be measured. It's, it's very uncomfortable because it causes a sense of accountability. But if you, actually, if you really do want to achieve a goal, having metrics is a very important part of achieving that goal. And then the fourth, yeah. and then the fourth phase, which is where we get to implementation. And implementation is sort of happening all throughout the process, you know, because I, I want people to go out into the world, try things out, and we're going to tweak them, right? Because I, I really do a lot of fine-tuning work. Sometimes people come to me, they have a pretty good idea of what they're trying to accomplish, but they need help sort of detailing it. And so the implementation process, it, you know, it, it really ranges depending on the scope of work that I'm working with somebody. But you, you need to go out, try, and then get some information from the outside world and then interpret that information accurately. And what we tend to do is go out into the world and it doesn't happen. Like things don't happen the way that we expect them to. Right. And then we look, at, then we get all self-conscious <laughs> and then we create this story about what happened. Uh, it is not really what happened. And you uh, really have to think about who you're getting feedback from uh, and give that, give that, a, you know, qualify that. And yeah. and that's that's an, a really important reason. Like I, I hold that space for you to yeah. be the the reasoning, <laughs> like the sound right. reasoning, where it's okay for you to have your emotional experience to it. It's very valuable. Like that's that I'm not going to tell you not to have that. However, when we're getting to the point where what do you do next, we got to be able to organize that out and figure out what information we really did learn. And so implementation is really about interpreting what happened and interpreting it accurately, not interpreting it based on some story that you've created for yourself. Well, you know, this is interesting. We're going to go to break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about this and give you some examples. Uh, but I just want to give a shout out to John. John, thank you for your instant message. So here's what John has to say to me about the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah, Dr. Pat. <laughs> I think that's like a term of endearment. I'm not sure. Booyah, Dr. Pat. Can't stand the uniforms. However, you might be interested to know that one of the reasons they work, maybe why Steelers are winning, is because Roethlisberger, the quarterback apparently. Roethlisberger, Ro yeah. Thank you, Benny. Roethlisberger uh, now can see his receivers. One of the reasons <laughs> for changing to stripes, nobody else is using them. <laughs> okay i'm schooled i on get that. it i totally get it <laughs> I, he's like yeah imagine now having the uh, this is john thank you john i can't take the whole time doing this but i'll just read a little bit more imagine dr pat now having tiger stripes nobody else has in a color most people can't tolerate and now you can hardly not miss your receivers and running backs okay let's go to break break i'll be right back we'll be right back <laughs> Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Yeah. Check us out at drpatshow.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Have you ever wanted to learn about the colors of your chakras? Well, now's your chance. Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, is hosting an event Friday, November 4th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in Mount Vernon. Every person will get a reading on the most prominent color in their aura. Join Lynn Brown November 4th at the Riverwalk Studio in Mount Vernon. To register for this event, call 360-588-4713. That's 360-588-4713. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Suzanne Evans. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. 
Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world. And she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input from the Archangel from the Ascended Masters, from the Light Beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of Sheer Alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed and on your part, Connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Radically Distinct Radio. Jen Morgan in the house. Jen, before we, we before we jump in here and sort of put the icing on a cake, um, please tell us the best way we can find out more about you. Go to my website, jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two N's, morgan.com. And you can subscribe to the radio show on any of the uh, social media apps like iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, uh, SoundCloud. You can find me over there. And also, I wanted to say... Before we get going, um, hello to my friend Drew Stone, who's been tweeting about the show all morning long. I really appreciate your support. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so listen, tell us about now. Here we are. We've just heard this. We want to know more. We certainly want to be radically distinct. How do we do that? What's next? What do we do? Well, what what do you do in order to become radically distinct? I think, well, f- first of all, I think... I think it's really important if you want to be radically distinct, you need to be able to have a definition for yourself about what makes you radically distinct. Like, how do you see yourself in that way? And how do you then communicate it to the outside world? And it's really good, it's important to have somebody that you can work with on that, whether it's somebody like me or even just a buddy. You know, how do you describe that to the world that's, that is authentic to you, it feels good for you to say, and then it, you're able to express it in the world? And then how do you make decisions that way? So that's really the important piece of perception is understanding that the way you perceive yourself is in a symbiotic relationship with how the outside world perceives you. They exist together. So, you know, you want to start first with the perception you want to create for other people and then understand you can't control their perception. All you can do is influence them with the actions that you take. So you want those actions to reflect the profile you created for yourself. Awesome. So uh, do I get to be the CEO of my own deal? Yeah. Well, so being this, so oftentimes I say that knowing what makes you radically distinct is starting to master your own time and energy. And and that is what it means to be the CEO of your own life, your own uh, career. There, there is really, at this moment in history, technology has completely disrupted every industry. Everybody is all of a sudden an entrepreneur of their own career. Uh, technology has also changed the way that everybody relates to one another, how we build relationships, how we have friendships, how we communicate. Everything has changed. So if you're feeling like, what do I want to do with my life and is this really what my life's all about – Consider the fact that the culture we live in is totally different than it's ever been ever before in history. And so everybody has has to reinvent themselves because the environment we live in is so different. So you can have control. You are not at the 100% effect of this change, but you do have to adapt. You do have to rethink who you are today. And you can be a CEO of your life, your career, and your business by 
knowing how the decisions you make, how you spend your time, affect the perceptions that other people have of you, and therefore the results that you create in the world. Wow. You know, I, I know that when we looked at this in, in the last segment we did, you know, we were talking about the process that you take people through. The, the most used word right now that is really surfacing in the world is entrepreneur. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're, we're having people rethink who they are in the world. You know, I, I had a very, very early meeting this morning with someone that said, you know, I'd really like to start my own business. And people are now looking more and more to be self fill in the blank yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you help people understand their value in the world? Because that could be a pitfall for folks. That could be a pothole you step in to want this and not know your value. You know, I think, well, there are a lot of people I have found who want to be entrepreneurs or be independently employed. And I think that for some people, they should absolutely 100% do it and stop planning. <laughs> they should, but you're going to have to, in order to make that change from being employed to being self-employed, you're going to have to become a, a very, like, very good at taking action. Because you have to play a lot of different roles, sales, marketing, product development, and then back to the drawing board, you're, you're con and then delivery. So there's a lot of different roles that you have to play when you become independently employed. And so there's a lot of reasons why you might be scared to make the jump. And so as soon as possible, what you want to do is find somebody to work with and, or some way to invest in yourself to start working on your ability to see yourself as a uh a person to be able to create your own income like that. That's a big jump. And then there's this other thing, which is there's a lot of people who are just unhappy in their jobs because they don't understand the value that they provide. And they're therefore not getting the respect that they would like to be getting and would be quite happy in a job <laughs> if they had that respect. And so oftentimes for me, when I'm working with them to find their value, I'm tr I'm trying to I am creating a value proposition for them uh, from a with business language around what you do. You don't just have good communication skills. You're able to make sure that a job gets done faster and therefore is able to get, maybe if you're developing a product, it's able to get to market faster, which means that the company is able to start bringing in income faster, right? So we can start actually adding dollar values to that. And we can also start adding a lot of things that come down to monetary things in a business world, but also from a emotional standpoint, type of environment that you create, whether or not that helps, in, you know, get people to be more productive, which also leads to time savings and things like that. So when mm. it comes to knowing your value, it's, yeah. it's actually understanding what you bring to the table from a business perspective. And, you know, I, what I help people do is from a create that brand perspective, which is a business language and also a personal relationship to that so that you can express it effectively. Yeah. And, you know, we're not just talking about, the, you know, the top 1%. You know, we're talking about, you know, whether or not you're an employee in your company, a manager in your company. All of this is really so related today in the world, you know, because the statement perception is reality uh, it is a pretty true one in, in a lot of cases, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, if you've ever studied the law of attraction and you hear people say, you know, your thoughts create your reality. And that statement is true, sort of, <laughs> in that it's not just your thoughts. It's the way you feel about those thoughts. So and what that means is like how you feel about things is actually people people sense you. Right. When you speak, you're actually putting sound vibrations out into the world. And then we hear them through our our eardrums like this is a very physical experience. So we're sending out information to the world that other people feel. And so if you don't feel so great about yourself or the way you're presenting yourself or how other people are perceiving you, you're just going to keep recreating that until you change the way you think, feel, and believe about yourself. And that's really the law of attraction is all about perception is so important in that piece because it's not just what you think. You can't just think good thoughts because it'll be hard to keep yourself believing there, keep yourself in that space where you can communicate that way. You have to think, feel, and believe that what you can do, you're capable of. And that's really what cognitive behavioral therapy is. You know, yeah. how do you get yourself from the point where you've got an idea to the point where you're acting on that idea effectively? And that's, uh, just, you know, it's like a, ther it's a therapeutic process. 
That's yeah. why I think branding is a little bit like yeah. therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Therapeutic process that turns into outstanding, radically distinct results. Absolutely. And that's really kind of cool. Jen, thank you so much for today. Hey, please tell folks again the best way they can get a hold of you. Go to my website, jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two N's, morgan.com. Or you can give me a call. My number is 206 972 5366. Awesome. Thank you all for tuning us in and turning us on. How much fun. Totally fun. I'm actually going to look at the Pittsburgh Steelers in a whole different way right now. Yeah, but I'm still doing my hair white, Jen, just so you know. Yeah. M&M for the holidays. <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll see you next time. All right. Hey, thank you for tuning in to Radically Distinct Radio. I don't want you to miss an episode, so subscribe to Radically Distinct Radio on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio. And if you can, please rate and review the show on iTunes. Stay connected to me. Sign up for my newsletter on my website, jenmorgan.com. Follow at Radically Distinct on Instagram and Facebook. And tweet with me at, at Jen Morgan Brand. Until next time, I'm Jen Morgan, reminding you to be radically distinct. Thank you.